What's up guys? Welcome back to Title Gardens. Right now I am messing around with some new gear that I'll talk about in a second, but I figured while I mess around with it, why don't I go ahead and record a building walkthrough slash update for you as well. So what have I got going on? I've got a cinema camera here that I, I only use for like travel. It's my Cinema 4D from DJI. It is an ultra smooth camera because uh, it has a four axis gimbal stabilizer built into the cinema camera, which is pretty unique. And it is really nice and smooth, but this camera is freakishly, freakishly heavy. So I had to buy a support vest to help me walk around with it. Otherwise my arms would basically fry out in about five to 10 minutes of, of, uh, of use here. So long story short, it was heavy. I have a support vest and this morning Ben said, I look like Doc Ock when I wear this thing. So anyways, uh, right here what we're looking at is our newest system, set C. We did an update on this not that long ago, but it's come along a little ways. We got all the water in here. We have some, some rocks in here started. We're going to keep some rocks in here mainly for, uh, for the fish. They'll appreciate some place to hide. The closed loops from a biz are in place and running. And we get a lot of questions about these stands. And these stands are from a place here in Ohio called Alufab. You can find them at alufabinc.com. I should put a little link in the description. So if you guys are really curious about trying to purchase something like this, you can reach out to them. And if you mention Title Gardens, they will even give you a discount, I believe. So that's something to take a look at. The other thing that people ask me about is what is the thing that the tanks are sitting upon between the, the tank and the stand? And we use two different layers. One is kind of our squish layer, which is a four pound per square inch foam and we use a structural layer which is a type 1 PVC and you can get away with using marine grade plywood uh, we don't do that here because I pretty much want to avoid as much of that as possible that might come into contact with water so the solution we came up with between the, the four pound foam and the type 1 PVC pretty much eliminates any chance that it's going to get destroyed by water. We have our little step overs here. I can't wait to get this thing started. So you might be wondering, well, it looks like it's pretty much ready to go. I mean, water's flowing, like what's the deal? We are waiting on the plumber to install the heating and cooling lines. I'll walk over to that real quick and I'll we can take a, a look back at this in a sec. All right, so way over on the other side of this bathroom is where we're doing all the filtration and whatnot. You can see some of the other photography equipment. So this is the sump right here. And we have some, uh, what are the things, those things called? Marine Pure Blocks, have our filter socks, and this little open section that you see right there, that is for the heating and cooling lines. Now, a lot of that is already ready to go. You see these uh, four little guys right there? Two of those are for heating, two of those are for cooling, and this stuff here, this coiled up wire, that is for the temperature probes for each of those systems. Theoretically, uh, we are on the calendar for tomorrow to get this done, but I am not going to count my chickens before they are hatched. They will be done when they are done. Now, this very, very large body of water being indoors, uh, this place is pretty well temperature regulated. These tanks all stay at about, you know, 70 degrees. 
but just in case, I would really rather not fire this thing up and not have it have its own heating and cooling. So, other than that, this is more or less ready to go. We might want to add more flow later, which is going to be pretty trivial. Um, speaking of, I believe, step over. I believe we have like some, some pumps here already, some CJ Voyager 10s. I think I bought one for each of them, but we might have found a, another use for them in the meantime. So there looks like there's only two sitting there. So we could add a little bit of flow. Long story short, there's that. We will be assembling the protein skimmer over there fairly soon here. No big hurry on that. So what all do we still need for this guy other than the heating and cooling? Uh, we're waiting on some controllers. We are waiting on possibly doing something with UV. Obviously no hurry on either of those. But yeah, very good progress making its making its way. Over here, this big empty space. I'm such a big fan of this big empty space. It was so cluttered with manufacturing junk for the longest time and we actually built a small um, shed just to house all the, the loose plumbing and racks and racks and racks of fittings. So this whole area here, I, I like the fact that it is basically this open canvas that we can design and play around with something in the future. But right now, it is housing nothing. I love it. Big old nothing. All right. We have what used to be an, an SPS quarantine tank and it exploded in Aptasia, and that was the biggest blessing in disguise because what we were able to do was farm up a whole bunch of Bergia nudibranch to the point that uh, we were finally actually able to sell them in here. And so if you've been paying attention to our social, we've been putting a lot of those packs for sale. Uh, they've been selling out like hotcakes. Every single time we mention it, they all sell out. So I was like, are we now officially in Aptasia farm? Like, what's, what's the deal with all this coral stuff when we could be selling these, right? Because the key to, uh, to Bergias isn't farming Bergias. It's farming Aptasia. Bergias will take care of themselves. Too, too well, in, in fact. So you, you run out of Aptasia nearly instantaneously. So we used to have like thousands of Aptasia in here, and they're basically all gone. And we're like looking around, wondering like... What are we going to do? <laughs> anyway, we've got a couple of coral quarantines. We have Becca's tank over here. Uh, she did a recent update on that. And we had so many uh, excess uh, Bergias, we ended up throwing in like a whole bunch into there. But lately she's been having quite a bit of success doing um, the, what is that thing called? The Reef Delete. She quite enjoys like spending a little bit of time away from the computer to come in here and, and zap some of her Aptasia. So that's a situation that's pretty much resolved itself. Okay, and we're back over here. Uh, we've got our Peninsula Show Tank that we did a, an update on fairly recently. Uh, soon I will be doing a video all about Kalkwasser. I'll give you a sneak peek at uh, some of our Kalkwasser containers. We make them in batches of 20 and we uh, we cycle them in and out. So once we are all set on the final dosage of calc, which is going to be about 15 to 20 gallons per day per system, um, that'll come in really handy. So we, we dose one and then while the other one is mixing and, and swap back and forth. So yep, this is our SPS, or I'm sorry, this is our Peninsula Show Tank with the Orphic lighting. Yeah, still very much a... Uh, a grab bag of, of random corals in there. 
Uh, let's see, we have this giant TV thing. So this thing is actually a touchscreen monitor. It's 80 inches. And it was the most bizarre thing that we came across because I was actually purchasing some office furniture on eBay. And when we went to pick it up, because that was one of the things about office furniture, it was like, you know, a lot, a lot of money to, to ship. So instead of shipping it, I was like trying to find some places local on eBay that were selling what I was looking for. We found a place and when we went to pick it up, it was like the strangest warehouse imaginable. They had all kinds of like weird stuff. I mean, weird, weird, like 50 pound buckets of gummy bears and furniture and clothes. And they happened to have like these TV type things. And I was like, what's the story with these? And the seller was like, yeah, these things are usually like 16 grand or something like that. They're for you know corporate meetings. You can do all kinds of like whiteboard type stuff on that because it's all touchscreen. Um, I'll sell it to you for $400. And I'm like, deal. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I'm going to buy it. Turns out I'm not going to do anything with it. So my plumber coming tomorrow said he wanted to buy it. So this will be gone. Moving along, moving along. We have our Ephilia tank. That's doing really nicely. I could do an update on this guy because he has inherited uh, this orange shoulder tang as well as a couple other fish, I believe. Uh, there's a copper band in there that's doing nicely, which isn't always the case. It's sometimes very challenging to get uh, those guys eating properly. Then we have our unintentional anemone tank, still growing. Should we try to get some clownfish for this guy? I was still, I'm still on the fence because like they're such jerks. They're such big jerks, but we still might. Okay. This system here on the left was the first one that we had put up. These guys, for the most part, are doing pretty well. Now, the, the problem with this tank is that it has fairly low pH. And that is something that we're trying to fix with Kalkwasser. Right now, the pH is sitting right around, I don't know, like 7.6. And I'd really like to get that towards 8.3 in a hurry. The, the Ghani Poor, though, just love this. Absolutely love it in here. SPS, mm. some do, some don't. Obviously, I expect them to do quite a lot better once we've got um, once we've got that pH situation worked out. Okay, moving on, we have the actual SPS show tank. This guy is, mm, for the most part, hanging in there, but I think it's kind of hella pissed as well, because yeah. PH is an issue, and I really need to get in there and clean those rocks. Like, I haven't done that in ages. But some of these big colonies are finally growing in. We could add more colonies, but I mean, what's the point? Uh, I've, got a, I've got a PH issue that I need to fix. Okay, scooting right along here. Uh, got some, this is kind of like a random grab bag tank. It's not a ton going on, I guess. It's where we are doing some different shows and whatnot. This will eventually make its way out into the, that empty system up front where we're, it's going to focus a lot more on the selling. And then this is mainly where we are farming some acros and things like that. I apologize that the glass is a little dirty. I haven't cleaned it in a little while. But anyway. That's what's going on here. For the most part, things are okay. Some things are a little bit upset. This isn't exactly at, at, uh, at peak health, but we'll get back to that, I'm sure. Okay, workstations. This tank here, got a lot of LPS, a lot of euphilia, not, well, euphilia, no, fimbriophilia here, 
torches or hammers and, and frog spawn. Over here, we actually have the torches. So this is the euphilia, as well as some other LPS. Back behind here, we have some zoas growing out. This tank needed some extreme cleaning that we did, and we finally got around to it, so those guys are doing much better. And then this tank is kind of just like a lot of the SPS that we didn't want to be having take space up in the, in the main system. So a lot of uh, like the forest fire digis, things like that, some rainbow. Montes, things of that sort. This over here is our fish quarantine. Currently, we're just taking care of just two fish right now. And they came from our system. Uh, it was like a little wrasse that had some kind of like fin rot going on. And then uh, one of our, I guess these are like what convict tangs, was not looking that great. Put them in there with some uh, furine too, and they're doing much better. They're probably ready to get back into gen pop, but not just yet. And the other ones are just drying out for the time being. We, we aren't going to get any fish in for a little while. Okay. All right. We can make our way back to the front. And I'll show you a quick peek upstairs. So we don't get to, to show you that quite enough. Change the white balance up a little bit. This is kind of like the workstation for the guys in the morning to do all their printing and whatnot. We've got the little 3D printer working away on some power supply brackets. This is our new, um, what do you call it? This is our new conference table. I just picked this thing up on Facebook Marketplace of all places. It was really weird. Like that morning, I was shopping around for a conference table. And just on a whim, I was like, you know, I should just check Facebook real fast. Sure enough, they had the exact one that I was looking for. Very unexpected. And yeah, the guys were willing to deliver it and install it and everything. It's like perfect. So the only thing that we need to do is to get some electrical from the, from the floor below and go up through the floor and then it will power these outlets here. These are kind of cool. Bulk. We have our kitchen break area all nicely illuminated. Still working on some trim for the upper cabinets and stuff like that just to block that last little bit of light hitting our eyes. But otherwise, it's coming together nicely. This kitchen has turned out a lot better than I ever expected, to be perfectly honest. I love it. Much nicer than the one I have in my house. Little side table that will likely make its way out to a barn at some point. And with these two large cutouts, you can see the systems below. And if you were ever wondering where the electronics were for the Peninsula Show tank, they sit in that kind of that pergola support. You can kind of see how that all looks. Lastly, just give you the quickest sneak peek inside the studio here. This has been like a little work in progress for a while, but I've been installing a cloud ceiling. And this is even going to get a little bit better in the future because I've got some more stuff planned for this, for this ceiling. In the meantime though, it is super duper quiet. It quiets all this, this entire place down, almost to like a scary, scary extent. Still moving stuff around. Got my desk here. Got Becca's desk over there. She's out today. 
Yeah, and this big studio. It is actually more square footage than my house. It's pretty, pretty insane. It's close to what, 1,500 square feet or something like that? I've got a little, little farmhouse. So I need to install more, more of the cloud layer over there to cover up the LEDs. And what I'm planning on doing in the future is adding like a second layer that drops down with like fishing line. It's gonna look really cool and provide some more sound dampening. But that's it you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed like the walkthrough. Till next time y'all, happy reefing.